from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, August 11th to Saturday, August 17th. So last week was quite the week. I know we've been having quite the weeks every week as of late, but we kicked things off with that new moon in Leo on the 4th. And as predicted, definitely had major breakdowns and major breakthroughs, especially where the heart is concerned. Of course, that new moon in Leo had to share the spotlight with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who shifted out of that heart and soul of the zodiac in that Leo energy shortly after that new moon popped off and shifted into Virgo energy late on the 4th. So we definitely had major energy shifts, really shaking, rattling, and rolling our headspace, our heart space on the 4th. And of course, we continued that particular energetic chaos into the 5th when Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves, went retrograde. And of course, in his rulership and Virgo energy, definitely threw our heads for a loop. Now, we had, again, this non-Lion's Gate 88 portal. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, even though I talked about it last week. I feel like now we have to do a follow-up. However, the anticipation that the collective had for this quote-unquote hugely positive energetic day, I don't know how many of y'all felt disappointed, but the 88 portal, as they want to call it, was nothing but a purge date, mostly because the moon in Libra sat on top of the south node in Libra, throwing us back, back into old relationship dynamics, old situations where justice wasn't served, old situations where we want to go back to some of the things that we fought very hard away from. It was a purging date. So again, do not fall victim to all this spiritual new age crapola out there that, you know, makes every day a significant day when there's no scientific basis for any of it. I feel like if you are an energetic being who is activated, which not all of us are, okay, there's many people out there just trying to play the part. Um, If you're actually in tune, you would know that this was an energetic setup, an energetic setup. They wanted you to feel empowered. They wanted you to feel powerful. They wanted you to feel hard aligned, like a major, major energy shift was going to take place. It was nothing but a purging period. We're going to talk about that in just a second. I'm trying to stay on track and not get distracted here this week. So let me just continue and then we'll jump all into my rants and raves a little bit later. Um, This week, this past week, I should say, um, we had a lot of conjunctions that I spoke about in last week's Ascension Forecast that I feel were probably more significant than A, this non-Lionsgate portal for sure, uh, but B, kind of playing off of that new moon in Leo that was the major pivot point of the major change and transformation in our heart space that triggered and activated all of that emotional weight that then when Venus moved into the Virgo energy we could look at matter of fact like this is what happened this is how it went this is how it plays in my mind I have to look at it as it is not for the way that we wished it would actually be and suddenly we gained some clarity there but the conjunctions were between the moon and Venus and Mercury, and then you throw the moon on top of the nodes, and thus why we didn't have this almighty, super powerful Lion's Gate 8A portal. First of all, the Lion's Gate portal was not in alignment with Sirius. As we talked about last week, that happened in Cancer season. The alignment with Regularis isn't happening until Virgo season. So what were we actually aligned with? Like I said, spiritual kafui. That's the only thing that we were actually aligned with. Um, But to say that last week wasn't pivotal would be an understatement because it was. Anything that happens in the heart and soul of the Zodiac, this Leo energy, is going to be a major shift, first of all, in what we have to unpack and unleash, and then what we have to kind of repack to take with us on this next journey. Now, we're going to continue some revelations into this week because what do we have going on, you may ask? Well, first... We're going to have the first quarter moon pop off in Scorpio energy. Now, Scorpio energy is no joke. The first quarter moon is no joke. So we are definitely going to get down some nitty gritties here. 
Now, the first quarter moon of any lunar cycle is a point of action, a point of crisis, a point of decision, a point of semi-urgency, where whatever it is that we were confused about that popped off around the new moon in Leo suddenly is coming very, very clear to us. We understand what needs to be done. Now, the Scorpio energy, because it's a fixed water sign, we're looking to stabilize in our emotions. But in order to do that, we're going to have to unleash a lot of those heavier emotions. Again, purge, do the shadow work, get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, feel it in order to actually heal it. The water energy is very transformative. So the weight that we're currently going to be aware of from now until the 12th, when we have this particular first quarter moon pop off, the weight needs to be felt in order for us to truly appreciate it when we let it go. This is what this first quarter moon in Scorpio is going to be about. And then two days later on the 14th, we have Mercury retrograding back into the Leo energy. So if you listen to the August energy forecast, I kind of explained it in the way that like when Mercury is retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy, there's not a whole lot of emotion involved there because again, we're just highly critical and super judgmental as we're analyzing and reevaluating situation circumstances that have already taken place. Again, a retrograde, we're looking back. But we're not really bringing our heart along with us. That's when Mercury retrogrades back in that Leo energy. That's when we're trying to get our heart and our head on the same page. Now, no doubt, a certain amount of clarity, a certain amount of aha moments and light bulbs should have gone off while Mercury was in the Virgo energy. But that kind of clarity is just matter of fact. It's just information. It's just details. Now we got to bring the heart back into the equation, see what actually makes us feel good about some of the plans, some of the strategies that we're currently formulating on how it is that we're going to move forward and what it is that we're going to actually do and pursue. So Mercury just retrograde back in the Leo energy, first of all, is going to be a throwback to July 16th ish. That's when Mercury hit that degree that we are going to go direct in 21 degrees in Leo towards the end of August. So there's going to be some, some sort of connection there. The big ideas that we were having the first time around, we're probably going to have to re-edit them, review them. The let's call it disconnect between our heart and our head that we were suffering under the first time around, suddenly that gap is becoming smaller and smaller. But let me also say this. The 14th is also going to be a big day because we're going to have Mars and Jupiter come together for their conjunction. This is the first time that this is happening since May 29th of 2022. This is the catapult energy that I've been talking about. This is like uh, not only stepping on the gas, but hitting the nitro button at the same time, which is going to create a lot of smoke, going to create a lot of confusion because, of course, we have all these retrograde planets. So part of us, our soul, our spirit, our mental plane, we got a plan, we got a strategy, we want to move forward, we want to take action, we want to make moves, we're all gassed up to do it. But Lord Jesus knows we're going to run into some obstacles that are going to prevent that particular progress from taking place. And that is going to anger the shit out of us all. Now we are going to talk about that Mars and Jupiter conjunction, uh, probably as we get closer to it. We're already kind of in the feels of it here today, Friday. Um, what is today? August 9th. Thank you so much for being with me here Friday evening. If you are, if you're not and you're catching the replay, I thank you anyways. But we're going to be talking more and more about this Mars and Jupiter energy building as we kind of get closer to the 14th. We're already kind of in it because we're within orb already. But Mars and Jupiter, especially in this Gemini energy, we are going to gain some clarity. We are going to put those pieces together. We are going to see a greater, grander vision for us. And we are going to be gassed up, hopped up, either letting the fuel of passion and excitement fuel us or anger and frustration fuel us. Doesn't matter. It's going to be magnified. The volume is going to be turned all the way up. And we are definitely going to feel ourselves be moving in a different direction, even if we're standing still. Our inner realm is building towards the action point. Now, a little bit of hesitation for me to say all of those beautiful gassed up type of energies because we are going to be squaring off with Saturn. Now, that's a whole separate topic and theme because what I also want to talk about is that we are in the realm of building towards Jupiter and Saturn square. Now, this is going to be taking place on the same day as the full moon in Aquarius on the 19th. So again, another reason to go ahead and listen to that August energy forecast so that you can be prepared for what is about to take place around the 19th. 
Also, download your zodiac forecast, sun, moon, rising to get the biggest, greatest, grander picture on what you can experience in the areas of your life that are going to be most influenced by some of these aspects. And listen to part two of the year ahead reading that I put out at the beginning of the year. We talked about the major astrology, Jupiter squaring Saturn is definitely one of those things. And if you're over on my Patreon, first of all, thanks for the love and support over there. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I am getting back into the groove of things and I am going to have a special astro class talking specifically about this Jupiter and Saturn square coming up because it's a big deal. Now I am going to give you a summarized version for all of us to get under the same kind of perspective, the same kind of energy understanding about this dates back to December of 2020. When we had Jupiter and Saturn, and let me just remind you, Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and wisdom. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He, typically speaking, provides restrictions and boundaries in order for us to learn the tough love life lessons. I like to say it like this. Jupiter, I'm going to talk about accordions, okay? I know some of you have already heard my accordion analogy. We're doing it again because it's a good one. I want you to think of an accordion and I want to think I want you to think of it at its most compressed state. The minute that we haul off on that accordion and we bring it out, we expand it to its furthest potential. That is Jupiter's energy. He expands us. He makes us grow. He makes us evolve through the wisdom, through the life lessons in which we kind of move through. Okay. But when we get that accordion to its absolute expanded potential, suddenly we have to compress it. We have to push it back in. That's Saturn's energy. Okay. Saturn is restriction. So where Jupiter wants us to grow, Saturn wants us to stay in that particular place to really make sure that we learn the lessons before we go ahead, we take action, we make moves, and we kind of build upon some of those tough love life lessons, some of that wisdom that we've already accumulated. Now, taking you back to 2020, That is when the great conjunction actually happened. And for those of you not really into astrology and just starting to get involved in it, the great conjunction is what kicked off the pandemic. Okay, we had Jupiter and Saturn and Mars and Pluto, a bunch of them. Okay, they were all together in Capricorn energy, right? And they all came together. They all conjunct. It was something that astrologers for decades were anticipating that nobody wanted to listen to you all about. And then all of a sudden the pandemic popped off and suddenly, how come nobody told us about that? Oh yeah, that's right. We've been trying to tell you for years, but that's another story. Now, December, 2020, Jupiter and Saturn came together in their zero degree conjunction. Okay. The great conjunction with all of those planets that took place in the Capricorn energy, Jupiter and Saturn, then were at the zero degree in Aquarius. They did this back and forth in Aquarius energy, taking us all the way into the end of 2021, back and forth, back and forth. Suddenly there was growth and then there was restriction. And where Aquarius is concerned, that society, that's why we had all of these quote unquote travel restrictions, right? Then they would loosen things up. Oh, the fake pandemic, suddenly everything's okay. Little bit more freedom, that's Jupiter. And then what happened? No, we're locking everybody back up again. That's Saturn, okay? This is what we've been doing. But we are in, so again, when a conjunction happens, you hear me talk about this all the time. When a conjunction happens, that is a reset. That is an ending just as much as it is a beginning. And that was essentially back in 2020, that was the beginning of the end of the old structures that were currently collapsing. You want to talk about structures collapsing, you talk about Pluto. Pluto's in Capricorn energy. We've been collapsing the societal system of the power struggle since 2008. Okay, we've seen it in the housing crisis. We've seen it in the stock market, especially in the U.S. Because y'all in the U.S., you're going through your Pluto return 248 years. Pluto returns back to the exact same place that he was at 248 years ago. And spoiler alert, civilizations fall at 248 to 252. I'm talking years. So we're at the like 249, 250 mark for the United States of America. And if you want to take a step back and take a good look at what is happening to the US of A, this is the Pluto return. Okay, it's all playing part and parcel. Back to Jupiter and Saturn for a second. A conjunction at a zero degree when planets meet up, that is an ending of a chapter. It is a beginning of a brand new story. Now they have since, you know, 2020, they've been trucking along. We now have Jupiter and Gemini energy. We now have Saturn at this present moment, retrograde in Pisces energy. Now we are reaching the first quarter square 
of this particular storyline between Jupiter and Saturn. And this particular first quarter square consists of three different activation points, okay? And Jupiter and Saturn, they only come together like every, let's say 10 years-ish, okay, for their conjunctions. So this is a, a decade story that we are just at the first quarter part of. Now, we are going to have this first quarter square between Jupiter and Saturn at 17 degrees. Jupiter is in Gemini energy. Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy. What does Gemini energy and Pisces energy have in common, you may ask? Well, they're both mutable signs. What does mutable mean? Mutable means that it's time to change. Time to be flexible, time to adapt, time to step back, time to ask ourselves if what we've been doing is actually getting us anywhere, or could we try something different? Could we try something different in order to get a different result, or are we going to continue to do the same old, same old and continue to get what we've got? Well, we are going to have some major pop-offs because of this square taking place from now until June 15th of 2025. Let me tell you why. We have, again, story began back in 2020 at a zero degree in Aquarius. This August 19th, same day as the full moon in Aquarius, this is going to be the first of three activations. 17 degrees Gemini, 17 degrees in Pisces. We have December 24th, 2024. We will be doing it again, this time at 14 degrees Gemini, 14 degrees Pisces. Why is that, you may ask? Well, it's because, you know, retrogrades. Hello. Um, we are going to have the third and final square off June 15th, 2025. Here's the kicker. It's going to be when Jupiter moves into one degree in Cancer and when Saturn moves one degree in Aries. Okay, what do we know about Aries energy? It's the first sign of the Zodiac. What do we know about Saturn moving in to Aries? Well, that means that we would have completed a whole cycle through the Zodiac Wheel, which we're doing right now in Pisces energy. We're essentially deconstructing, closing the door on the old way of life the old system, the old structures. And what happens in Aries energy? We have to take action. We have to bring new things to life. That is essentially when we are going to have to activate, which we're in training for right now, our creator abilities in order for us to all, you know, get together and start restructuring the kind of realm, the kind of reality, the kind of society that we want to be a part of. Now, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know 2026 to 2027, going to be major pivot for rebellion, major pivot for the revolution. Shit is going to pop off. And this in 2025 is the beginning of us scratching the surface of trying to make some major serious changes in our physical realm that we are going to resist. We're, we're resisting it now. And then we actually get a little bit of momentum going. And what happens? We're going to meet resistance from the people that we're trying to take the power back from. When we talk about power, what are we talking about? Pluto. Pluto is going to go back retrograde in September 29th, critical karmic degree of this Capricorn energy, bringing a finality to what it is that we've been struggling to collapse since 2008. He sets up shop in Aquarius energy November of this year in Aquarius energy and will be there for the next 20 years. That is when we return the power back to the people. So you have to keep in mind that all these major planets, these heavy hitting planets, these odor planets, they're societal, they're collective, which means that, you know, systemic change takes a while to fall apart. It takes a while to be built. There is this whole storyline of death endings and closures in order for a rebirth, a resurrection, a true transformation to take place. And it's happening in our society. It's happening in the collective. It's happening to the people. So what I'm getting at here, and I know I'm long winded, I get you, but the from August 19th, to June 15th of 2025, we are going to have several activating situations and circumstance pop off in order for us to be flexible and adapt and change course. Now, when we talk about the fact that Jupiter will be at one degree in Cancer energy and Saturn is going to be at one degree in Aries energy, June 15th of 2025, those are cardinal signs, okay? Right now, the two aspects, August and December of this year, they're immutable energies. 
So mutability is when we're faced with information, facts and details that present an option to pivot, make a different plan, take a different path in order to create a different result, we're more open to doing so. Cardinal energies, they're the initiators, okay? Um, so Jupiter is about goals and beliefs. Saturn is about the results of those goals, of those beliefs. Right now, Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy, helping us to break down the false belief system, the unworthiness, undeserving, victimhood mentality type of belief system, while Jupiter in Gemini energy trying to push and expand our mental plane, information, intellect. Now, a lot of this first square energy that is going to be taking place on the 19th has us looking back to that pandemic. Now, you've been listening to me for any amount of time. You would know that we are in the time of disclosure. We are in the time where there are facts, evidence, and proof coming out of this scandemic that we all were a part of that is going to challenge a lot of people's mental planes to a breaking point. Saturn in Pisces, there is a large sweep of death, okay? The death isn't just happening because of the, let's call it Jabberwocky repercussions. The death isn't happening just because of some of the war and conflict taking place on the earth plane right now. The clean sweep of death is because Pisces energy is karma and a lot of soul contracts are coming to an end. That's why you're seeing a lot of younger people be kind of, you know, dying for weird ass reasons right now. Why? Because the younger generation have already come in with the light codes, with the grid set up. They understand their mission and they've gotten here and they realize that we're so far back on timelines that they don't stand a chance in hell of executing their mission. So what do they do? They peace out in order to reincarnate back into a different body in a different timeline that that maybe they have a chance in hell of actually executing what it is that they come to earth to actually accomplish. It cannot be done under the parameters in which the earth is currently set up under. I don't mean to be in a negative Nancy here. I'm not saying that this is all doom and gloom, but you have been listening to me say for a very long extended period of time that we are not on the timeline that we are supposed to be. We are not on the trajectory that we had potential to be on. And it is very disappointing for those of us that are awakened, that have a mission to execute, to know that we aren't even on the playing field right now. We're still sitting on the bench waiting for the collective to get their shit together so that we can actually go onto that battlefield, onto that playing field and actually play our hand the way that we were meant to play it. We're not there yet. And so some people are getting patient. Some people are just getting frustrated. They're saying, you know what? These aren't the environment, the parameters in which I can operate and execute my plan in. I'm going to peace out. I'm going to try it again. Now, if you don't believe in all that stuff, reincarnation, timeline jumping, travelers, walk-ins, all of those things, you need to open up your mind. Jupiter and Gemini is going to help you do that. But there is a lot of information going on right now, helping to clear out the earth plane. All of those, you know, people that are dying of weird ass shit out there. It isn't necessarily the physical realm that is causing that particular death and the choices in which they've made that contributed to their death. It is karmic in nature as well. Sometimes we need to go back into the spiritual realm and fight battles there that we're not prepared to be battling here on earth plane. Thus, why we've been having a situation with our sleep, right? Because some of us aren't meant to be in the astral realm where there are certain battles going on in the astral realm. Thus, why we're awake all freaking night for weeks at a time. That's changing as well. If I ever get out of this rant phase and actually can start talking about, you know, the ascension symptoms for this week, we will cover that. Back to my Jupiter square Saturn little rant that I got going on here. Um, this square... Again, square creates tension and conflict because we're going through a growing pain. And we have three different refinement energies with the three dates that I rattled off to get this right. And so this square is first going to highlight the gap between what we actually believe in and what, like, what we believe in, what we actually believe is possible, what we actually believe we can achieve, and what is actually realistically actually able to be achieved and obtained. So it's like, okay, we have dreams, we have a belief, we have a vision, but is, is it actually real? Like, is it, is it actually obtainable? Are we just off in la la land, like just, you know, gassing ourselves up for a false sense of hope? Or are we actually able to do the things that we believe are possible for us? This is going to be, again, the first aspect, the first 
let's call it time that we're getting questioned in this way. And from now until June 15th of 2025, we are going to be bridging that gap, so to speak. So every aspect, you know, it starts off here, August 19th, December of 20, or, well, December 24th of 2024, we're going to further refine that. We're taking a step back though, because it's going to be at 14 degrees Gemini and Pisces versus the 17 degrees that it is taking place, um, you know, August 19th. And then, like I said, the real game changer is June 15th of 2025, Jupiter growing and expanding the cancer energy, right? Like, okay, foundations are being built there. Um, magnification of where we need to create boundaries to actually nurture and nourish ourselves while we're going through these growing pains. And then you have Saturn over here, Mr. Karma himself, bossing us up into new roles and responsibilities to take action, to make moves, to be the creator of our realms and reality here in this Aries energy. But then we get blocked by boundaries and restrictions. Okay, so it is going to be a little bit of kerfuffle to get past this first quarter square. And of course, from here, we're going to make our way to the, what we would call, a, if we were talking about the moon, that would be that what comes after the first quarter is the full moon. So we are going to have um, a point in time here in a couple of years where Jupiter and Saturn are going to sit across from each other, directly oppose each other, fully illuminate different paths, different options, different results to the different belief system in which we've tried to implement. That is going to be another choice point. And then, of course, a couple of years from that, we're going to have our last quarter square or fourth quarter square, if you will, which is the elimination process, the removal process, the reflection back to 2020 and to this particular point in time, 2024, when we had our first quarter square and reevaluate what our options are, what we what didn't work, what did work, what we are going to do differently, what we're not going to do differently. It's going to be a whole thing. Now, that's going to come at us in a couple of years. So we really don't have to worry about it now. But if you're keeping a journal or if you're keeping, you know, an astrology type of log book so that you can reflect back on some of these major pivotal points in your own life, this is going to be a time in which you're going to want to capture. You're going to want to write it down. And so, you know, we're going to figure out what is actually important to us. We're going to figure out the gaps between, you know, our dreams, our goals, our visions versus the present moment and how it is that we could actually formulate and strategize a plan to actually get there. And then it's just going to put into perspective our ambition like our dream ambition, like if there were no restrictions, what would our dreams actually be? And then we're going to reality check ourselves and actually say, okay, but is that actually achievable? Like, can we actually do this here? And we're going to make the finer adjustments needed in order to actually get in alignment with what needs to be done. So that was a blurb and a half. Uh, I just checked the time. I just spent, you know, 27 minutes um, going on about a rant that I wasn't planning on having, but that's just the nature of things. I obviously needed to talk about it. It's out in the open now. We'll talk about it a little bit more, especially on my Patreon. We're going to do a whole astro class about it, although I did pretty much say everything that I probably will say again, probably just in a different context because I am going to involve the full moon in Aquarius because that full moon in Aquarius is a major pivot point as well. So if you want to be a part of it, I would highly recommend that you jump over to Patreon, you join the community because I do have a couple of things planned, especially seeing as Patreon just rule, well, rolled out um, some new features on that platform. That's what I've been waiting for. And so I guess let me just, you know, move into the homework aspect of things. Um, and then we're going to talk about the ascension symptoms for this week. So as always, I just want to start with a thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below, making it a very beautiful place to scroll through. I want to thank you for the continued love, for the continued support in whichever way you can share it with me. Um, for those of you that have been supporting my channel through small donations, I thank you so much for that. Your financial generosity, love and support is appreciated in ways that you will never know. Overall, anyone who is here, who is present, who is sharing your time, your energy, your space with me, I appreciate you in every way, in all forms. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, especially to scope out a lot of that paid content that now becomes free to the public that we have July behind us. 
if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you can join as a free member over on my Patreon and you can go back and listen to July Zodiac forecast, Z uh, the June Zodiac forecast, any month that is now, now behind us, that paid content for my Patreon VIPs now becomes available to you. And of course, there are a lot of, um, I'm going to say paid rants, paid astro classes, all my paid content over there, you get a little bit of a preview of as a free member anyways. And of course, if you feel so inclined, you can become a member and join the community and we can all just kind of link energetic arms and move through this absolute shit show together. I want to also just recommend that, of course, um, the Leo season e-guide is still available for download, helping us through these energy shifts, these energy adjustments as well. And not that I have very many appointments still available for August, but if you're interested in booking a session with me, if you want to work together to get through this particular life chapter, go ahead and snag yourself a spot. I'm sure there are other things on my homework list that I should be talking about, but I just want to jump into the Ascension symptoms, go on a little bit of a ranty rant, starting with, I want to take, I want to take a poll. I have two polls that I want to talk about here. First poll, uh, reflecting back to last week, how many of y'all hit your funny bone? Okay. Who hit that elbow? It's not so funny, is it? Okay. But here's the thing. Um, so many of y'all have already kind of commented that that happened to you and that it wasn't something that, you know, was intentional by any means. I don't think anybody is super intentional trying to hurt themselves, make themselves cry over something that should be funny. But I just think it's very interesting to have such a, let's call it specific uh, ascension symptom. I think it's very fun to have a poll, especially seeing as this beautiful community stretches all the way around the world. Uh, we have all, all kinds of people from all walks of life in this community, which I absolutely just adore. But how weird is it that we all experience the same thing? This should be a reminder to you that you are never, never alone. Okay. You might be isolated in your physical realm. You might feel like a weirdo, but you're not alone in it. We're all isolated. We're all weirdos. We're all allowing our freak flags to fly independently, of course, because none of us are close enough to each other to even see each other's flag. But that is strategic. As you know, all of us little, you know, awakened light beings, we are sprinkled out throughout the earth. We all have our own little territory that we have to hold the vibration down in. And this is why many of us are isolated. Many of us are alone. Many of us are just, you know, not not peachy keen when it comes to being around people. I know that there is this want, need, desire, this yearning, if you will, to be around like-minded people, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to be light pillars. And when you get a bunch of light pillars all together, first of all, that sounds like a very powerful force, which I'm sure would make some major ripple effects in this particular matrix, but it's also setting up a huge ass target for us to be wiped out. And if you do not think that there is an agenda out there to wipe us out, to make us not bring in new earth, to make us not usher in positive change. If you think there is no agenda to wipe us out, you are mistaken. I am not fear mongering. I'm just saying that us light beings, we attract the demons, if you will, like a moth to a flame because we're here to light them up and light them on fire. Show them the light in every respect, stand in our power. When too many of us get together, weird shit happens. Let me tell you, weird shit happens. This is why we're sprinkled. Sprinkled, sprinkled, sprinkled all over the earth. And many of us will never meet each other in the physical realms because that is a danger not only to the world, but a danger to ourselves as well. Now, does that mean that we shouldn't be congregating and doing global meditations and all the things of the sort? Absolutely not. But we do have to understand that we're at a pretty, pretty, pretty intense part of this spiritual war of this particular chapter in the battlefield. And it is not recommended that us awaken light beings congregate in one particular area at a time because again that is a major major target that we are all putting on our own backs so when i talk about these ascension symptoms this is why i love it when y'all are open and real and raw enough and vulnerable enough to share your experiences in the comment section below because you have no clue 
who you are helping, okay? There are people with tears running down their face that are ready to end it all, that suddenly just stumble across the page and start reading through the comment section and identify with people that are going through the same thing. And that very connection, them reading the fact that what they are experiencing is not solo, not just individualized to them, that they are being kind of brought in being a part of something much bigger, that is enough reassurance to make them boss up, to make them wipe the tears off of their face and to throw their plan of escape from this earthly plane out of the window and to continue to stay here, to continue to fight, continue to do this particular journey with us. When I say to you that I've been doing this work for 20 years and it still surprises me, of the amount of people that I have an impact on that I don't even know about. Sometimes I tap on this little microphone thing and I'm like, is this thing even on? Then I will get a comment out of the blue. I will get an email out of the blue of somebody in a dire situation. I didn't know that they were hanging on by their last thread. I didn't know that something that I said that I didn't see as anything significant or meaningful was actually the pivot point that made them hang on and fight. This is why I'm saying to you guys, we are all in this together. We have to be more open, sharing our experiences, the painful parts, in order to reassure those that aren't feeling like they have a team backing them, to reassure them that they are not alone, to make them realize that we're all fighting the good fight and that we cannot give up on ourselves, we cannot give up on each other, that we have to continue moving on. Now, I know all of this came out of the funny bone situation. I just think it's funny because how random is it that people all over the world who never would come together in any kind of way other than this particular community have all experienced the exact same thing over this last week. That to me still is mind blowing. That to me is still validating. And I hope that you find it validating too. So I wanna take a poll. How many people had the funny bone hit the funny bone episode over the course of this last week? So if you're live in the chat, hit that poll button. Let's see what your answers are. So the second poll that I wanna take here, let's talk about this non-ass, fake-ass Lionsgate portal. Okay, so I am hesitant, but I am working on a, I don't even know what I'm gonna call it over on my Patreon, but it is gonna be a private forecast, private episode, private rant and rave type of thing for my paid, my paid people over there. Um, I know I do the whole Marley rants, but now I kind of want to do a Marley rants, you know, unpopular opinion type of section because very few, I, I've seen one other person talk about how fake ass this Lionsgate portal actually was. And I'm not trying to say that I'm special and I'm not trying to say that I have, you know, secret information or intel or whatever, but I know when I'm the only one going against the grain, go, uh, only one going against the narrative that I'm probably going to be outcast, but I'm probably going to be right. And let me just say, sometimes I do not enjoy being right. Sometimes I take no, no happiness in being right because it does not feel fun. But again, story of my life to be the only one out here talking against the general narrative. Okay. It ain't for the, it ain't for the weak of heart. That is for sure. All week, I'm sure you've seen it too. Lionsgate portal, 8-8, Lionsgate portal, 8-8, most powerful day, most powerful day, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, I already revealed in last week's Ascension forecast that there is no merit to this quote-unquote portal. Anyways, like I said, the whole foundation, the whole basis of what this Lionsgate portal was all about went back to ancient Egypt with the alignment of the star Sirius over the, the pyramids of Giza in alignment with Orion's belt. And then, you know, at the peak of Leo season, Leo the lion, Regularis, the brightest star in the Leo constellation that won't be activated until we move into Virgo season. Sirius already got activated back in Cancer season. So tell me again, what was this portal? What was the merit? Oh, oh, that it was the eighth month on the eighth day, even though we're in a fake ass calendar. Okay, well, that to me is not enough. And like I already kind of discussed in last week's Ascension forecast, I laid out the astrology for y'all. And the only thing significant that we had going on on 88 was, first of all, it was a moon day. Second of all, the moon was in Libra. Third of all, there was a moon conjunction with the south node of the moon, which was a karmic release. 
So I don't know about y'all, but when I talk about purging, when I talk about release, I don't think of that as a happy-go-lucky vibration and frequency. I don't think of that as a very, you know, uh, bubbly type of day. I think, oh shit, release and purge. That sounds like some birthing pains that aren't going to feel good. That sounds like some emotional, you know, fluctuations that aren't going to have us in the best mind state, let alone the best emotional state. And uh, again, I don't know where the general, you know, consensus comes from that this was a magical day. I want to take a poll right now. How many of y'all had an amazing, powerful, super vibratory day on 8-8? Okay, show of hands, was 8-8 an amazing day for you? Or... Was 8-8 an agitating, mind effery emotional outburst of release and purging of the heaviest emotions and a throwback to a lot of painful situations and circumstances that we're trying very hard to move through? Um, I don't know about y'all. I don't know if you can see my hand, but I'm, I'm raising my hand to the second one, okay? Was the Lion's Gate portal the all-powerful gateway that you thought it was going to be? Yes or no? I'm voting no. My hand is up for no. Okay, so let's talk about it. The South Node in Libra and Energy. The South Node is what we're what we've perfected, where we're moving away from. The no the North Node is in Aries energy right now. Thus, why we have the eclipses on the Aries and Libra and Axis. Side note, we're moving into another eclipse season here in a couple of weeks. Prepare yourself. Um, but the North Node is the new path that we need to move into. Yeah, it's foreign. It's unfamiliar. It is not very well known, and it is scary as f. But the South Node reminds us what we've already done, what we've already perfected. We've already done and perfected codependent relationships. We have already done and perfected playing small to make other people feel bigger. We have already perfected those people-pleasing qualities that have gotten us absolutely nowheres, but feeling like the map that everybody gets to wipe their feet upon. We've already done that. We've already done the disservice to ourselves. We've already done the unjust things to ourselves in our karmic chapters. We just wanted to play whatever part these people needed us to play to be loved and accepted. We've done that. We're moving away from that. But when that moon hit that south node on 8-8 and we were thrown back into painful situations, especially where relationships dynamics are concerned, where codependent relationships in particular are concerned, where we do not feel like justice was served in some kind of way, we were thrown back in that. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel powerful. That feels like we're beat up and broke down. Okay, so where is the most powerful Lion's Gate 88 portal energy coming from? That's right, it's coming from nowhere because it does not exist. I hate to tell you, but the spiritual new age community is one of the largest psychological operations that has ever gone on in the, let's call it awakening, which side note, awakening is just an awareness that we're being feed, like unfairly treated. That's how every revolution, every rebellion has ever started. Okay. Now I am again, going to be talking on my Patreon about unpopular beliefs. Uh, this spiritual new age community is at the top of my frustration list because this is the biggest psychological operation to delusional broken people that we have ever had. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good things that come out of the spiritual path, but whatever we got going on, social media influencers, again, Saturn and this Pisces energy, the false gurus, they are falling, okay? That old belief system, falling. We're getting to the truth of what it means to be a spiritual being, spirituality, spirit in reality. Okay. You don't need to sit cross-legged in a meditation for six hours in order to embrace and embody the powerful energies of the God creator source in which you are. You don't need to do that. You just need to be. Okay. You just need to be. And so I have been making a list of all of the falsities that I myself have gotten caught up in, that I see other people getting caught up in. I have a whole list going and I am about to rip the spiritual new age community and new asshole over on my Patreon whenever I can get up the boldness, the bravery, the courage to open my mouth and speak about a lot of these things that are likely going to get me canceled. I'm not doing it here on YouTube. So I'm just, I'm just forewarning you. I am not speaking those particular truths here on YouTube. If you are wanting to get involved with what I have to say, you are going to have to meet me over on Patreon. 
Okay, let's talk about some actual ascension symptoms before this hour is up. I'm at that 44, 44 minute mark. Gotta love those repeating numbers, just like the 88, okay? Just like the 88. Anywho, okay, let's talk about the lower back for a, for a second. Our lower backs, first of all, root chakra. That is the survival programming of the egoic form of our physical meat suits, okay? That is changing. Why? Because we just had the new moon in Leo pivot our heart space into our most authentic, true vibration and frequency. And guess what? We are building the boldness, the bravery, the courage needed in order to break away from some of our bad habits, some of our old programming, some of these old situations and circumstance that we know are done for good. But are we really prepared to take action? Are we really ready to do that? Well, our lower back pain would suggest no. Okay, our mental plane being in a retrograde would suggest no. Um, Mars, who rules over the actions in which we take in Gemini energy, the mental plane would suggest no. But again, as I've been saying, cultivating this fire, the spark, the flame, getting our ducks in a row, crossing our T's, dotting our I's, getting a well strategized, well thought out plan together is a very powerful force. It's actually more powerful force than taking action. If you're just taking action willy nilly, you're preparing yourself for some setbacks. We're not doing that. We're tapping into our creator energies. And so, you know, the lower back is definitely going through some things. I'm going to extend it all the way down to our legs. Our legs are going to be going through cramping, Charlie horses, tremors. You're going to stand up walk to the kitchen maybe, and suddenly your ankle is going to give out. Are you gonna twist it? We don't know. Is your legs gonna fall asleep and you're just gonna to fall to the ground? Well, we don't know, but you are gonna have noodle legs. You're going to have instability in your physical legs. Why? Because the structure of our plan is not thought out carefully yet. The impulsivity, the urgency, the restlessness that we are experiencing to wanna to take action, wanting to make moves, that is just the buildup. But if you do not have a solid structure, again, in your bones and your feet and in your legs to hold you, to house you as you move forward to execute said plan and to go after new goals, dreams, and ambitions, if you do not have the proper structure, you are falling flat on your face. You're going to be reminded of that in the instability of your legs, of your ankles, okay? We trap fear in our knees. We trap the fear of not knowing the next step forward in our ankles. And we hold a lot of, I'm gonna say, confusing beliefs in our thighs. And so from the waist down, we are just a shit show. We are just a mess. And that is definitely going to be mirrored back to us in, again, Charlie horses, tremors, leg cramps, sciatica, ankle twisting, legs falling asleep, pins and needles in our feet. Okay. So from the waist down, we are just a mess. Let's talk about the midsection for a second. We're going to have a lot of stomach cramps. Now, if you've been stuffing your face, <laughs> again, I'm raising my hand here. Um, now, granted, it hasn't been all junk food, although, you know, eating a whole tray of uh, cinnamon rolls with gluten and dairy wasn't the best decision that I've made over this past week, but you know, my choice, I, I knew the repercussions of it, putting that crap in my body, still suffering for it, but nonetheless, I made the decision, I'm going to deal with the consequences. We have been stuffing our faces. We have just been, you know, the hunger, the cravings, just putting the food in, why? Because we're in Leo season, we're acting like a lion. We just came out of hibernation. We want to eat a horse. Again, PETA, don't come at me. Zebras, antelopes, little creature beings. We love them all, okay? But that is not the food chain that Mr. Lion actually abides by. And he wants to eat himself a whole damn horse. And we want to eat ourselves a whole damn horse. Or in some cases, the whole tray of cinnamon buns to oneself, which is absolutely disgusting that I did to me. But that's okay. I'm owning it. Um, either way, we're, we're stuffing things in. Now, yeah, we could get a stomach ache because of that, okay? But I'm talking like crampy cramps. I'm talking like, huh, something, something's different with this crampy cramp, you know? 
A lot of this is because we're worried, okay? We hold a lot of worry, a lot of fears, a lot of anxiety in our gut. We're not trusting our gut. We have a little bit of clarity, a little bit of vision, but it's not a, the it's not like the greatest, grandest plan. Like there's still some holes in this plan. We're not feeling safe and secure in what it is that we're about to embark on. We're not sure where we're starting. And although we're trying to play it super easy peasy cool, because that's just the general nature of Leo season, we're big, we're bold, we're courageous, we can do it, we can do anything. But deep down inside, we're kind of trembling a little bit. And that nerve stimulation is definitely creating the crampy cramp in the gutty gut, okay? So that crampy cramp in the gutty gut, it could come out the back way, like a force of nature, like you're not stopping it. It could come at a very, very not good time, okay? A very embarrassing time as well. Or it could come all the way up, regurgitate it out of the mouth hole, Okay, either way is not favorable. Either way is not pleasant. It doesn't feel good. But that crampy cramp needs to kind of expel. We need to lighten the load. Okay, we're moving into a time of purifying. Why do I say that, you may ask? Well, because there are some Virgo placements. The Virgo energy needs us to, again, purify. We need to lighten the load, so to speak. Our head space is all flaclemped because, of course, Mercury is retrograde. Once we move back into that Leo energy, we are going to be feeling a little bit different on that. But at the same time, our head space, there is a pressure there. It, it's, it's like a mild headache. It could even just be one spot on your head that is super sore. It could be that your hair hurts. It could be it almost feels like somebody bonked you on the head, right? You're like rubbing your head and you're like, damn. Somebody sneak up on me and bought me on the head I didn't know about or I don't remember. Like, what is that? That's Mercury. OK, and we're not feeling good about it. However, with Mercury, especially in the Virgo energy, up until we, you know, flutter back into that heart space and that Leo energy, what we focus on is what we manifest. And what we're focused on right now is all the things that could go wrong, all the things that we wish we didn't have to deal with. All the things that, oh my goodness, just, just, I wish they would just resolve themselves. And what does that do? If it clumps our stomach, it adds to the stomach ache. Now we're getting the crampy cramps, okay? When you have flutters in your stomach or these crampy cramps or this twinge, like somebody is sticking a hot raw poker through your back and into your guts, just think about what you're thinking about. Because that's going to give a, a clear indication on where it is that your mind is in the gutter, where you got to flip that script into something positive, something more calming, something more encouraging, something more supportive to get rid of the crampy cramps. Because wherever you focus on is what you're manifesting. And what you're manifesting is a whole lot of worry in your gut, a whole lot of anxiety in your gut. We don't need that in our gut space. We don't want no crampy cramps. We don't want no backyard evacuation. We don't want no regurgitation coming out of the mouth hole. We don't want it. It is going to hard to keep our quote unquote, shit together. We are going to have a certain gag reflex, okay? You know, when you can feel something kind of bubbling up, that acid is brewing underneath that rib, you know, your rib, this is the solar plexus. We're just having this bubble guts. We're having indigestion, flutter in the hearts, this heart activation. We can feel it coming up our throat. We can feel the burning coming up our throat. We can feel that watery, spit that takes place right before you puke we can feel that and we are gagging on it we are biting our tongue our throats are itchy they're inflamed we feel like we want to roar like a lion especially when mercury moves back into that leo energy but if we roar like the lion we actually might project all vomit all the crampy cramps going on in our gut space that's just the way that we're feeling we don't know what to say we don't know what to do we're we're again we're confused. We're cluster after in our head space. We're cluster after in our heart space. Mercury moving back into Leo energy going to help bridge that gap, bring us back into our heart and head alignment. But we're not there yet. We're worried as shit. We don't have all the answers. Then that makes us feel dumb. We don't have the long term plan and strategy put together. That makes us feel incompetent. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so good. OK, so that watery liquid. It's really not going to help anything because our mouth film is back. We are going to have those sweaters back on our teeth. Tooth. Teeth? Tooth. Don't come at me. Add it to the Marleyism dictionary. 
Anywho, uh, we have a lot of energy building up in our throat space, in our mouth space. Our teeth could possibly hurt, even though they're wearing little fuzzy sweaters. We are having this watery spit. We're having watery snot too. I don't know if y'all just, you know, somebody turns on the fa faucet there and then it's just all this liquid snot comes falling out. That is a purge. That is uh, the phlegm. That is all of the gooiness, the confusionness that we just gotta get out of our system. You just gotta let it drip. Now, back to the mouth for a second, you could find yourself mistakenly, but very aggressively, biting your lip when you weren't supposed to, biting your cheek, taking a whole chunk out of there, bringing that blood taste back into the mouth fuzzy sweater film. That's gonna be a good time, sounds good. The itchiness in the back of the throat. So we are healing something. We know that itchiness does suggest healing, but it's in the back of our throat. Like we need to swallow our tongue in order to itch that itch. Um, a lot of that is just because, again, we're not in the place nor the time to actually speak our new vision, to speak on certain situations and circumstances, to speak our new truth. All of that will come when Mercury goes direct towards the end of August, but we ain't there yet. So that itchiness is alive and well. We need to like clear our throat. <clears throat> Again, adding to the want, need, and desire to drink steadily, to eat steadily, because that kind of, you know, itches that particular scratchy at the back of the throat. We want to talk about some irritation, some itchiness, but especially to our, like we've been talking about skin and, you know, skin, depending on where it is that the itchiness is at suggesting where it is that we're healing certain organs, certain energy blockages in the physical form. But the skin irritation is on our face. Now we've been talking about how our, our face, our image is changing. Thank you, Chiron, for that. We've been talking about sunspots. We've been talking about moles or blemishes just appearing or disappearing in some cases. Our faces are changing. The way that we see ourselves is changing. Because of this, there's a lot of irritation on our skin. So of course, yeah, you could have skin eruptions, but I'm talking about like, what is on my face? Did I walk through a cobweb or something? It almost feels like a beginning of a, an allergic reaction. You know how like your lips start to tingle and your eyes get rate right itchy. Um, it's just very concentrated on our face. And I know that we're in Leo season. It's all about the image of the ego avatar in which we're projecting out. And of course, now we're trying to align the soul and spirit to be fully expressed through this physical meat suit. I know Chiron is helping us with this attitude adjustment, with this image adjustment. I know that Venus and Virgo is helping us to see ourselves from a clearer, more purified lens. I know that there are a lot of aspects taking place right now, helping us to see ourselves in our truest form. But the feeling that is going to be taking place, it's almost gonna feel like you wanna scratch your face off. Now, I really recommend not doing that, okay? That ain't cute for nobody. Um, not gonna feel very good either. But let me just also say that it is, if you watch where the irritation is taking place in, in the reflection of the mirror, you're also gonna see that your eyes are being drawn to seeing your face, your eyes, your, your nose, your facial features from a different, a lens from a different perspective. And so all of this face irritation, this itchiness is just bringing attention because many of us, A, well, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a funny here. I'm going to say this. Many of us spiritual people do not spend enough time in the mirror. Why? Because there is a tainted, corrupted thought, let's say, that looking in the mirror is ego-based is, you know, you can call it what you want to call it. We have a huge group of people that aren't spending enough time looking in the mirror because when they do, they don't like what they see. They don't like themselves. They can't look at themselves in the mirror. They can't look in their eyes directly, the window to the soul. Most people just do not like to look in the mirror. And then you got a whole group of other unawakened ass people who do nothing but stand in the mirror taking pictures of themselves, right? So it's like ass backwards. Those that have a low self-worth, a low self-esteem are 100% always in the mirror trying to build themselves up. Those of us that have a positive self-worth, self-esteem, we, we avoid looking in the mirror because our physical form doesn't match the energy that we know ourselves to be. And that's just the disconnect that's kind of taken place as our energy selves, our higher selves become 
more of a pivotal anchor than our physical ego selves are. And so we're going through this whole like needing to take a good look at ourselves, right? We need to take a good look at ourselves, starting with our facial features, starting with the change in our eyes, the light that we carry in our eyes, and just becoming a little bit more aware on where it is that we've been resisting taking a good look at ourselves. Um, so yeah, face definitely. Now I want to talk about the eyes for a second. It's going to feel like, I'm not going to say like our eyes are blurry. I want to say this. You ever, you ever get like oil in your eye or, you know, um, I don't want to say, you know, makeup because not everybody wears makeup, but everybody has put like, you know, cream on their face and you know some has gotten gunky in their eye or you got oil in your eye something you know oily that kind of gunks things up a bit that's what it's going to feel like because our vision is blurred right now our perception of self is changing our vision for the future is changing we are not at the place that we thought we were going to be at this particular juncture in the calendar we're having a hard time coming to a term of acceptance with that we're, we're trying to be as, you know, silver linings as possible. We're trying to be as positive, as optimistic as possible. But the real nitty gritty, the real nitty gritty truth of it is that we're just having a hard time seeing. We're having a hard time seeing what once was. We're having a hard time seeing what currently is. We're having a hard time seeing what could possibly be. And so we are going to see this manifest in blurry vision, in feeling like there's gunk in your eye, feeling it's not like a dry sensation. We got like a little bit more lube taking place in our eye holes this week around, but it is going to feel like we're we're blinking and there's just some, some sort of gunky, gunky film over our eyes. It feels like there is a, a cloudiness. It feels like there's a blurriness. It feels like we can't see that far ahead. And a lot of that is because Mercury is currently retrograde. In order to figure out how to move forward, you have to look back. And we're looking back with a tainted perspective, if you will, of what we thought we would be dealing with at this present moment. So I did talk about heart activations. Again, just to kind of let you know, once Mercury moves back in that Leo energy, we are going to have a whole slew of heart activations once again. So this could be emotional you know, really feeling that heaviness on your heart space. It could be happiness. It could be passion. It could be excitement, or it could just be flutters. It could be indigestion. It could be a physical sensation. It could be a, uh, an emotional sensation. Either way, we're going to have to get to the heart and truth of the matter. That's what Mercury and Leo energy is going to help us do. Um, I did talk about sleep. We are sleeping better, you know, raise of hands, I guess, third pole. Are you sleeping better? in comparison to the last couple of months. Um, I am, thankfully, my goodness. Uh, we all just need to take whatever sleep we can get as a win. But again, reminder, if you're having a hard time with sleep, it's because your presence in the astral is not needed. And in some cases, you are actually being protected by not being able to enter into those realms. Some battles are not all of ours to fight. Some of us need to sit on the bench for some of those particular battles and where we just kind of entered into a new timeline, into a new karmic chapter back at the solstice. You know, every every level of the video game that we get to, there are new enemies. There are new uh, uh, oppositional forces. There are new dark entities that got to get unleashed here on the earth plane and in the astral realm. And if you are suffering with sleep issues, it's because your work is needed here, not there. And you are semi being protected by getting kicked out of the astral. And although it doesn't feel like a good way to be protected, which is being, you know, sleep deprived, it is definitely our higher selves way of keeping us out of conflict that we have no business, karmically speaking, be involved in. But I say sleep is getting better. We just need to take each and every sleep that we get as a win. So guys, I'm taking a look at my list. I think I've talked about everything that I want to talk about. And in some cases, I talked about things that weren't even on the list. And in most cases, I talked way more about some of the things that I had no business talking about on this particular forecast anyways. Um, but that's the way that, you know, the cookie crumbles. And I thank you all so much 
for sitting with me, for being with me, for sharing your time, your energy, your space with me. I thank you for being here, for being part of the chat, for dropping those beautiful emojis in the comment section below, and for being real and raw and vulnerable and sharing your experience, knowing damn well that it could be silently helping somebody at the end of their rope. We all gotta do our part. We are all here to help each other. And I just wanna thank you time and time again for showing up, not only for me, but showing up for yourself. I hope you have a great week. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.